Hello again and welcome to my channel. Please like and subscribe. The name is McDonald Ramana. Today we will be discussing uh, one of the topical issues in South Africa, which is gender-based violence, GBV in short. As we are facing this COVID-19 pandemic, Within this major pandemic, South Africa also suffers from gender-based violence. But there's a lot of questions, more so a lot of unanswered questions around gender-based violence. Because in South Africa, we even have a command center, the GBV, uh, gender-based violence command center, meaning that gender-based violence on its own. It's actually some type of a war in South Africa or civil war, if I may do say so myself. Be that as it may, gender-based violence in South Africa can be linked to a culture of violence. Why am I saying a culture of violence? Let's look at it in this way. We shy away from questioning or critiquing how culture plays a role in exacerbating or in increasing the levels of gender-based violence in South Africa. South Africa, like many other countries in the world, has and is made up of a patriarchal system. When gender-based violence happens, from the community, from uh, a family level. Mainly, you would have family members trying to intervene and trying to mediate so that they can actually put out this fire. And some of the gender-based violence that happens within uh, 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 the same community or within uh, uh, families or between uh, uh, partners or husband and wife, they never make it to the police station. We must remember that even though GBV can be mediated from the family level and can be mediated from a community level, still we have victims and perpetrators. So the more we shy away from reporting the cases, the more we increase the victimization rate and more so the recidivism that goes with gender-based violence. By recidivism, I'm, I, I, I'm referring to how the perpetrators of gender-based violence are allowed to get away with this crime because some families choose to keep it within the family and not decide to report it to the police station for one reason or another. The whole phenomenon of gender-based violence, it does not just begin with a partner killing a certain partner and I need to make this clear by gender-based violence it doesn't mean that it only it's only talking about the men uh, perpetuating this violence or women perpetuating this violence it speaks about both genders that are involved in perpetuating the violence and that are involved as either the perpetrator or the victim or vice versa so this violence, it, it does not just begin uh, as it, it, it grows. One moment, you have uh, one partner shoving the other partner against the wall. Then the next, you have somebody kicking somebody. Then the next, you have somebody stabbing somebody. Then the next, you will have somebody killing somebody. And in South Africa, it has a horrific, actually a horrible side when it comes to gender-based violence because it is actually, according to the statistics, it is the women who suffers the most gender-based violence in South Africa. I cannot recount the killings. I cannot uh, go into court cases. I cannot even go into uh, reports, newspaper reports and media reports that come forth whenever there's gender-based violence in South Africa. But again, let's look at culture, which is what I came forth 
to discuss how culture plays a role in gender-based violence. Whenever you have two partners involved in gender-based violence, what normally happens is that you have family members trying to mediate. There's nothing wrong about family members trying to mediate disputes from a family level. But there's everything wrong about family members trying to mediate disputes in which a victim becomes more victimized, becomes more disadvantaged, and then becomes more like a cast out, all in the form of uh, a, a culture. Because you would have some family members actually advising uh, 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 the women that, no, but this is a marriage and you must stay on. You would have some family members uh, trying to tell uh, a mother that, no, if you leave this uh, particular person, what are you going to do? If you leave this particular person, what are the children going to eat? If you leave uh, so-and-so, what will become of you? And that's a problem on its own. Because then patriarchy on its own, it gets away with gender-based violence. There's even idioms and proverbs across different cultures that perpetuate uh, gender-based violence in the sense that they always seem to protect the men against the women. Even in leadership circles, there are many people who still believe that uh, 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 for somebody to be a leader, they have to either pos possess certain patriarchal characteristics or certain characteristics that are associated with being uh, 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 men, which is wrong in that sense. And South Africa has got a culture of violence. From 1994, post 1994, and pre 1994, that culture of violence is still with us today. For instance, whenever there's a protest or whenever there's a strike, it usually ends up violent. Whenever there's demands that are supposed to be made either to the administration or demands that are supposed to be made uh, to the local levels, there's actually an element of violence in there. Coming back to how culture contributes to gender-based violence. For instance, families would come together, but instead of reporting the matter, they would rather try to mediate it or try to uh, uh, make sure that it doesn't get out there. People that are being victimized would go, would actually go to the police station. But when they get there, they don't have the might, they don't have the will to report these cases. Either because of the setup, because in many of the police stations in South Africa, when you get there, you walk in and then it's a space full of people who are there to conduct different businesses. So when you walk in there, you're not being taken into a safe space whereby you can express yourself and actually report what had happened. When you walk in there and then you feel demotivated, you feel like you are in the wrong place. And that is a problem that must be addressed. That is a problem in which social workers in police station, the social crime prevention uh, uh, strategies across police station must be able to address and must be able to actually interrogate. Because if you have people that shy away from reporting gender-based violence, it means the statistics that we get, which are already high, are not a true reflection of what is really happening on the ground. And let's not forget one thing. Even in communities, you would have a, a, a whole community, an entire community being aware that in family so-and-so, there are incidents of gender-based violence and they do not call the police. It only becomes an issue. It only becomes an issue in that community when those partners who used to fight and who used to uh, get involved in violence, one of them tends up uh, dead. And then that's when, that's when uh, the newspapers take uh, the matter into center stage. And there are many other issues uh, which happens and they never make it to uh, the mainstream media. And which are of a serious nature. Because the ones that make it to the mainstream media are the ones that happen to be reported, are the ones that happen to be uh, uh, investigated and more so convicted. So gender-based violence in South Africa, in brief, continues to be uh, a problem and a pandemic within a pandemic. From the national level to the provincial level to the local level, 
it continues to decimate every fabric of society and it continues to exist either in your wealthy suburbs in your well of middle class uh, 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 people and also in informal settlements as well it continues uh, to create problems and it continues to be because if you have a command center after a specific phenomena or after a specific crime that on its own is a problem and in East South Africa again we have uh, what we call 16 days of activism against uh, gender-based violence and I'm questioning this 16 days is it enough is it enough to only have 16 days in a year whereby we look into this uh, phenomena whereby we look into this horrible crime which rears its head now and then and whenever it does so it actually depicts horrible pictures it actually depicts horrible crimes that have been uh, uh, committed so in this 16 days of activism i think that should be questioned as well the activism should be throughout the year 365 days not just in 16 days to address this phenomenon people from the national level people from provincial uh, level people from local levels should go into communities and interrogate this phenomenon because it does not just happen out of the blue it is a pattern that is perpetuated by culture it is a pattern that is somehow indirectly perpetuated by society and we must not also forget about how alcohol plays a role in gender-based violence we must not shy away from that because some of these uh, actions that take place are actually horrible to an extent that you wouldn't think that somebody who's sane can do that so in brief today this is what i just wanted to uh, share with you and it's about gender-based violence the name is mcdonald Trambala. please like comment and subscribe to my channel the name is mcdonald Trambala. thank you very much